so I guess the theme of this video is how over the top the Trump coverage has become. He's obviously a larger than life figure, everyone knows how entertaining he is, but it's just incredible the coordination of the media in attacking Trump when first of all ignoring him would work a lot better if they were really against him. And it's almost like it's reverse psychology. The system is hated. The people hate what the system have done. They're very angry. Everyone knows, obviously, the kind of crap the media is peddling and how they angle stories in ways that are untrue or deeply misleading. And they do it daily across all the networks, regardless of the leanings. And this week, they're lining up against Trump like I've never seen anyone discuss ever in in the history because obviously of his electoral victories. Today we got our first post-debate polling in South Carolina, which holds its GOP primary this Saturday. And behold the devastation. The poll shows Trump with 35% support, putting him 17 points ahead. They have actually created a media, magical media window of nothing but anti-Trump coverage. Nothing but anti-Trump coverage. Like, there's nothing else going on in the world at all except how much everyone everywhere across the entire world hates Donald Trump. Uh, the Washington Post has put out an article that's a staff editorial saying they despise and fear Trump, and yes, they disagree with his policies, but the real reason they think Trump must be stopped by the GOP and there must be a brokered convention, they're not just saying it's possible, they're calling for a brokered convention because Trump is basically the new rise of Hitler. And the Mexican president said you're using the same kind of language that ushered in Hitler and Mussolini. I can't remember that kind of comparison being used against any other presidential candidate. Does it suggest to you that you should tone down your rhetoric and your tactics? Well, maybe so, but I mean, I, look, I have a tremendous following. We want to make America great again. It's a strong following. I don't know about the Hitler comparison. I hadn't heard that, but it's a terrible comparison. I'm not happy about that, certainly. I don't want that comparison. He's super fascist and just, it's going to be this violent brawling in the streets crap. Fine line between covering a candidate and amplifying a candidate. And, and I'm sorry, but yes, Donald Trump may be the Republican frontrunner. I still think we're giving him way too much attention in proportion portion to the other candidates who also had victories to celebrate tonight. And, and I, I'm worried when he institutes internment camps and suspends habeas, we'll all look back and feel pretty bad. And I'm not defending Trump. I don't trust Trump, but I get the anger behind his support. And I just think it's crazy. It makes me really angry to read the articles. It wasn't just the Washington Post. The London Guardian had an editorial. I've never seen this style of editorial. I've never seen the level of rhetoric. They took their staff writers, some of whom have terrible positions and are always writing just total garbage day in and day out. And it was all of them in the article. And they got their Muslim staffer to say, as a Muslim, Trump just frightens me more than anyone else possibly could, and I wet my Muslim bed sheets at night. And then they had a woman step up and say, I'm a woman, and Trump is just the worst because of this reason and this reason. I just couldn't imagine a world where Trump has this. Then they had a black woman step up and say, I'm African American, and this is just too far. Trump would be the worst possible candidate, and this is a nightmare. I'm also wetting the bed. And they had a Mexican-American step up and say, we've been the most trodden upon by Trump because of the border and immigration comments. They had every demographic possible step up and say, I am this kind of person, and that's why Trump would just be too far. What about the from the Clintons, from the Bushes, from Ted Cruz, from Goldman Sachs. What about the from Robot Rubio? How badly would this country be screwed by every other candidate up there? And how much worse would the screwing be because the media would sit complicitly by and not call them out for the real issues, as they always do, and refuse to condemn them for actual genocide and actual wars, refuse to condemn them for actually trampling on the Constitution and suspending rights. But no, it's Trump's rhetoric that has just gone too far. Is anyone living in reality here? Uh, the vast 
vast majority of that establishment should probably be in, investigated for prison alongside Hillary Clinton. Well, the bottom line is this. If they wanted Trump gone, if the elite was really declaring a war against Trump, they would simply ignore him. Like in The Simpsons, when the evil billboards came to life and the only way to stop them was to ignore them so they would go away. If they really wanted Trump gone, they would give him the amount of debate time they gave Ron Paul. Representing the 14th District of Texas, Congressman Ron Paul. <laughs> Congressman Paul, let me follow up with you for just 30 seconds. Is it worth going to war to prevent a nuclear weapon in Iran? No, it isn't worthwhile. And the only way you would do that is uh, you would have to go to the Congress. We, we as Commander in Chief, aren't making the decision to go to the war. You know, the old fashioned. The fact way that we're supposed to believe the level of ridiculousness that is coming out of our media right now and our world leaders who are coming out against Trump and all of these pundits and all these politicians and this weird global coordinated anti-Trump response, because it's global now. They've got world leaders the world over coming out against Trump. The freaking Pope came out against Trump. And to say that Trump is not a Christian because Trump said he was going to build a wall at the U.S.-Mexico border. A person who thinks only about building walls wherever they may be located, and not building bridges, is not a Christian. This is not in the gospel about whether I would advise to vote or not vote. I am not going to get involved in that. When the Pope lives in a walled citadel, it is the most hypocrisy ever for the Pope to come out and say that. But this global anti-Trump thing, how are we supposed to believe that this is real? And it makes me so angry because the system in general and the specific presidents and cabinet members and particular leaders of the past several administrations have so consistently screwed and screwed and screwed over the people over and over and over again. And the media never lined up to join hands and say, this is the line, we must stop them. And they were actually doing it. The Bush days were some of the darkest in our entire country's history, and they're burned into my memory because I lived through them. Has anyone been paying attention as our country has been completely eroded and destroyed? The country is gone, folks, okay? It's gone. The deep-seated anger at how little uh, establishment or coordinated efforts there were in opposing the things Bush did and that Obama did. The things that Hillary has really done, <laughs> they're reinventing her all the time. And tonight's debate is really Hillary Clinton's last chance to reintroduce herself. To reintroduce herself. Is this a chance to reintroduce herself? Chance to reintroduce herself. Wants to reintroduce herself. Hillary Clinton's moment to reintroduce herself. Sort of reintroduce herself. Maybe re reintroduce herself. Our media is like Hillary's PR firm. Okay, and she still sucks. That's how bad she really is. That she can have the whole media be her PR firm, basically. And she still is hated and loathed. And Clinton and the other Bush and the whole system, which has been thoroughly corrupt since well before World War II. There's a whole history. I spent a lot of my time researching that. And just so badly, the American people have been screwed over and over and over and lied to, and now they're up in arms and they say it's the last straw because of the things Trump has said. Give me a break. And that's just, that's reality. That's what there is to it. The fact that that system will never be held accountable tells you how evil it is, tells you how much worse that system is than anything Hitler could have concocted. There's no coordinated response to really telling you how horrible these things are to editorialize everything the way they've decided to do against Trump. I mean, hell, when, when the one lady was talking about the NSA spying on everyone, she was interrupted to go to live coverage of Justin Bieber. This vast collection of data is uh, not that useful and uh, infringes uh, substantially on personal privacy. The president, I think at this point, we should uh, seriously consider uh, not, uh, not continuing uh, Congresswoman Section Harman, 215. Let me, let me and interrupt the, you. Congresswoman, let me interrupt you just for a moment. We've got some breaking news out of Miami. Stand by, if you will. 
Right now in Miami, Justin Bieber has been arrested on a number of charges. The judge is reading the charges, including resisting arrest and driving under the influence. He's appearing now before the judge for his bond hearing. Let's watch. That's how much the mainstream media and the establishment agenda care about actual things that are affecting the people. The people know this, hence Trump. There's one reason for the rise of Trump, and it's not neo-Nazi powers brewing beneath the surface. People are supporting Trump because they hate everyone else who has graced that stage. They are so sick and tired of all the crap they were spewing. Why on earth would anyone want Jeb Bush, the brother of the worst president this country's ever had, and the most arrogant and, and usurping dynasty family that America has yet seen because he's the responsible policy person. He's very intellectual and, and measured out and rational. Enough with that stuff. People are well aware of what these party systems are doing. Uh, even a lot of people know about the think tanks who really make the policy behind the scenes and they're fed up with it. It looks as, to me as though the world is unraveling, that the order that existed is being challenged like never before. Trump is not trustworthy, but the vote for him, the support for him, is a voice of anger. Trump has become a vessel for a certain type of, let's call it, lost cause identity politics. One Trump supporter in South Carolina told the LA Times, quote, we're voting with our middle finger. And being completely disgusted level sick of everyone else and what they've been doing. And you know who I'm talking about. And I know the establishment got the message, but now they're trying to sell it back to people that he's somehow the second coming of Satan or something. So what does that tell you? That you're seeing a, a deliberate effort, the part, the GOP is against him. Curly Hoagland, an RNC Standing Rules Committee member and an unbound delegate from North Dakota, told CNBC's Rebecca Quick that Republican voters do not choose their presidential nominees. The media has created the perception that the voters will decide the nomination, and that's the concept, that's the conflict here. We're just one of the political parties. There's many political parties, but political parties choose their nominee, not the general public. The most respected papers in the country just couldn't possibly imagine Trump. They couldn't live in that world. Come on. Now they've all gotten together and they've gone to the lengths of calling him Hitler and just every possible thing you can think of. Trump is the worst thing. Trump and his ridiculous statements that he makes about what he's going to do and all that. Come on. That's the worst thing that he gets up on stage and says words those scientists who claim we might be living in a computer simulation, it is times like this, my friends, that I feel that those scientists may be right. And people go, oh, you don't vote? How could you not? You have to vote. No, I don't. Because I don't live in a world where I'm given a little handful of false choices as if, as if those are my only options. And if I see something as corrupt and broken like a casino... And I know that no matter how much money I put into it, I'm not going to win anything because it's just going to be the same old bullshit. I'm just going to choose to stop going to the casino. Other people obviously have not made that choice for themselves. I don't choose to submit to my own slavery by picking between a handful of lesser evils. There's not one good choice. Not one. Because if I'm going to vote for Trump, then I'm going to have to go ahead and forget all of his very long, extensive Clinton ties all of his very corrupt views on things like extending the Patriot Act. On metadata collection, Ted Cruz is glad that the NSA got out of it. Marco Rubio wants it back. What's Donald Trump think? I err on the side of security. And I'm not just saying that, you know, since Paris, I'm saying for quite some time. Uh, I assume when I pick up my telephone, people are listening to my conversations anyway. If you want to know the truth, it's pretty sad commentary. But I err on the side of security. All right, so you would be in favor of restoring the Patriot Act? I, I think that would be fine. As far as I'm concerned, that would be fine. Imminent domain, stuff I do not at all agree with in any way whatsoever. And if we had a president who was all about doing those things, we'd all be back here in a year complaining about it. But do I understand why people are coming out of the woodwork left and right to watch Trump burn down the GOP and piss on the ashes? I absolutely understand that. I just don't want this video to be mistaken for suddenly we endorse Trump. 
By the way, that would also imply that I think voting matters, and it absolutely doesn't. If voting actually counted, they wouldn't let people do it. I hate what the system have done. They're very angry. Everyone knows, obviously, the kind of crap the media is peddling and how they angle stories in ways that are untrue or deeply misleading, and they do it daily across all the networks, regardless of the incredible the coordination of the media in attacking Trump when first of all ignoring him would work a lot better if they were really against him and it's almost like it's reverse psychology the system is hated the people have leanings and this week they're lining up against Trump like I've never seen anyone discussed ever in in the history because obviously of his electoral victories. Today we got our first post-debate polling in South Carolina, which holds its GOP primary this Saturday. And behold the devil. So I guess the theme of this video is how over the top the Trump coverage has become. He's obviously a larger than life figure. Everyone knows how entertaining he is, but it's just- the station. The poll shows Trump with 35% support, putting him 17 points ahead. They have actually created a media, magical media window of nothing but anti-Trump coverage. Nothing but anti-Trump coverage. Like, there's nothing else going on in the world.